Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Hutchinson, and I'm recording my presentation by on the theory of comfort by Catherine Kolkava. So the description of Dr. Kolkava's comfort theory was initially described by her in 1994. The initial purpose was to explain the concepts that involve comfort and allow or prescribe a framework for nursing to enhance comfort measures. It is a middle range theory, so it is narrow in scope and grand theory, but still has broad enough concepts to be developed for several situations. The theory can also be op easily operationalized for appropriate settings. It focuses on a holistic view of the patient and their unmet needs. So application of this theory involves interventions that promote comfort, which will be defined shortly. Dr. Kokaba describes the origins of comfort theory stemming from her experiences as a nurse on a dementia ward, where she had to be a nurse detective because her patients couldn't verbalize why they were uncomfortable. She acknowledges the importance of compassion, strong leadership, creativity, and empathy in nursing, and less so the importance of technology in our increasingly high-tech world. She also acknowledges the importance of nurse theorist Orlando, Henderson, Patterson, and Zedarod as influences of her comfort theory. As she describes it, nurses assess unmet needs of patients or families, and nurses then design comforting interventions to enhance comfort of patients. If the intervention is effective, comfort is enhanced, and com enhanced comfort is positive, positively positively related to engagement in um, health promoting behaviors. Comfort is strengthening. When patients and families engage in uh, these behaviors, institutions have better outcomes. And this involves uh, increased patient satisfaction, nurse retention, and decreased costs. Dr. Kokaba described the purpose of comfort theory was to highlight the importance of comforting our patients in this high tech world, she added the concept of institutional integrity so that our administrators would also value the importance of comforting actions of nurses, thereby strengthening best practices and policies. So some definition of concepts. Comfort is the experience of being bolstered by having the needs for relief, ease, or transcendence met in the physical, psychosocial, environmental, and social context. She also quotes, to strengthen greatly. Relief is meeting a specific need, such as pain or dyspnea. Ease is a state of calm or contentment, uh, also in, described as finding peace. Transcendence is rising above problems, including feelings of achievement and purpose. She also describes uh, the physical, psychosocial, environmental, and social contexts. So physical is bodily functions or sensations. Psychospiritual is to examine self-esteem, meaning relationship to a higher being. Environmental are all external factors, and then social cultural involves the patient's relationships with themselves and their family. Some final concepts, health seeking behaviors are internal or external actions that bring the patient closer to their definition of health. Institutional integrity is the stability and ethics of any system tasked with delivering patient care. And intervening variables are non-modifiable factors that influence patient's health or success in seeking out comfort. Finally, some assumptions of comfort theory include human beings respond to a complex stimuli as a whole. The whole response is greater than that would be, would be expected by examining separate responses to separate stimuli and adding together the effects of those responses. And some propositions of comfort theory include healthcare providers assess comfort needs of patients and families that are not, exist that are not met by the existing support. Healthcare providers design interventions to address those needs. These providers also obtain a measurement of comfort before and after interventions are implemented. And if comfort is enhanced, patients and families engage more fully in health-seeking behaviors, both internal, external, and including the peaceful death. When health-seeking behaviors are enhanced, the integrity of the institution is enhanced. Here you can see a visual representation of comfort theory, also known as the conceptual framework. If you're a visual learner like myself, this is very helpful to see the interplay between the different concepts of the theory. For example, you can see how enhanced comfort enhances health-seeking behaviors, and health-seeking behaviors likewise increase comfort in a positive loop, as symbolized by the arrow going in both directions. Some relationships between concepts. In contrast to many other theories, comfort is defined as a positive concept rather than the absence of discomfort. The opposite of comfort is suffering. Comfort is a dynamic the state that needs to be individualized to the patient's perception of their comfort needs. Often providing comfort measures can met, meet several concepts at once, including relief, ease, and transcendence. 
Care should be delivered with the whole holistic picture in mind. The physical body is intimately connected with their mental, spiritual, and emotional needs. The context in which care is provided is essential to the concept of comfort, including the physical, psychosocial, so, social, cultural, and environmental factors. Regardless of the patient's needs or the setting in which care is delivered, assessment and promotion of comfort can always be accomplished. And finally, comfort needs interact and produce more discomfort together than a single need would separately. Theory analysis and evaluation includes, as we have just reviewed, the concepts and assumptions of Dr. Kokaba's comfort theory are theoretically and operationally defined. Additionally, is logically organized, and a brief review of the literature determines that it can be used in a variety of settings and situations, which we will discuss shortly. Review of several different sources regarding comfort theory, including our textbook and research articles, also revealed that concepts and statements are used consistently, and the outcomes are reliably predicted. The theory has been tested empirically several times over the years, including original research conducted by Dr. Kulkaba and other researchers in a variety of settings. For example, the articles I found and will discuss include both cardiac surgery patients and the anesthesia setting. However, I could only find limited sources of research on the application of comfort theory to nursing education or administration, despite the recent addition of institutional integrity. Finally, comfort theory is relevant to universally accepted standards, and review of the literature also provided lots of research material conducted in other countries that utilizes this theory. Since comfort is defined by the patient, it can be easily utilized despite differences in ethnicity, religion, cultural values, or other factors. With regards to theory application in nursing practice, I chose to involve early involvement of palliative care and hospice services with my, within my practice setting, which is the intensive care unit. We often have to care for patients who are facing a life-threatening illness with serious repercussions for both short-term mortality and long-term recovery. In addition, these patients are often incapacitated, which leaves the decision-making to their loved ones and adds a degree of complication to an already difficult situation. In my anecdotal experience, both nursing and providers often wait to suggest involving palliative care, which leaves little room for the development of relationships necessary for such difficult decisions. The result can negatively impact patient care and often leads to moral distress for nurses. I recognize comfort theory as a theory that can be easily utilized for this problem. Since several of the concepts can be utilized, it is a holistic theory and it can be used across cultural and language barriers. There are multiple barriers to palliative care, including the constraints of resources, economic and social cultural factors, attitudes of healthcare providers, and psychological barriers for families facing the fear of death or loss. In addition, it is estimated that 15 to 30% of patients admitted to the ICU will die during their admission. This problem is therefore widespread and global. The Oxford Textbook of Palliative Medicine offers a framework for organizing initiatives to improve palliative care access into the ICU. They suggest several steps, including an interdisciplinary work group, conducting a needs assessment, defining concerns, evaluating available resources, and developing an action plan. Additionally, the author suggests that advocating for palliative care early and frequently by nursing and providers can improve access to palliative care and therefore patient outcomes. As a result, I believe this is within the realm of nursing to address. It would be best supported by an interdisciplinary group as are most things in healthcare. Finally, I looked at an article entitled Family Experience in the Surgical Intensive Care Unit. It evaluated Kokava's theory via creation of a survey that was developed based on the comfort theory's four aspects of comfort, physical, psychosocial, so social, cultural, and environmental. It identified several areas of needed improvement, including protocols for increased provider communication with families and early palliative care consults. It resulted in the surgical ICU implementing the palliative care protocol, which where nurses identify patients that could benefit from early consultation of these services and advocate for early uh, initiative into the palliative care. It also resulted in daily rounds of the social worker and chaplain services for all patients, which was identified as areas of improvement for families dealing with financial and moral distress. I believe that Dr. Kolkaba's comfort theory is very congruent with the problems of access to palliative medicine and the intensive care unit. The promotion of a holistic view of the patient's needs and the incorporation of relief, ease, and transcendence allow this theory to be easily applied to patients that require end-of-life care. Dr. Kolkaba herself identified that this theory is a good fit for palliative medicine and has published works on the incorporation of this theory in end-of-life care. As demonstrated by this article, 
It provides a framework that can be used to evaluate comfort measures and improve patients' comfort. In fact, Dr. Kolkaba has tools available on her website, which is an open access site, that can be used to develop surveys such as the one used in this study. As an example, I would, could incorporate a similar survey to conduct a needs assessment on ways to improve this in my own practice head. In conclusion, I believe comfort theory is an excellent theory that improves the nursing profession and can, continues to help us provide better quality patient care. Listed here are my references for this presentation. You can find more information on comfort theory on Dr. Kolkaba's website, which is one of the listed references. Additionally, she has several published articles and books regarding comfort theory and comfort theory. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.